Uh, welcome to the uh, lecture eight, uh, the ALCO Terms of Reference. Uh, my name is Jamie Paris. I'm uh, Head of Liquidity Management at Standard Chartered Bank. Um, I lectured on cohort one, so fairly familiar with all the, the material here. We'll look at the governance structure, and then we'll touch upon the effective governance around the ILA process, soon to be phased out under the new PRA rules and a move to, to LCR moving more to a, an LSHREP and ILAP process come uh, 1st of October, at least within the UK market, and the ICAP process around capital. And then we'll spend some time going through uh, a couple of decks, two different ALCO packs. We'll talk about what a good ALCO pack looks like and why it's good versus what a bad ALCO pack would look like, or one that in some instances doesn't literally attribute all of the key risks that are going on on the balance sheet. It's a bit of a heads up. You'll be able to work out which, which one's good and which one's bad. Um, in terms of a link to previous lectures, this ties into your first lecture around the core principles that were set out there, which is really around the ALM framework and how the framework fits together. Um, and then ultimately, we'll talk more about how the ALCO fits within that. Um, for mainly small, medium, and large banks, my experience is within a large bank, so I'll try and share with you what I can in terms of experiences around ALCOs. I happen to sit on an ALCO, so um, I'll be able to share that. And then we can talk about how this actually all works in practice and how the interlinkage works in terms of the discussions that are held within an ALCO and how that then is determined into business strategy and the execution of the requirements around what the ALCO has set up. I think one point to bear in mind that this this pack won't necessarily differentiate. When we're talking about the ALCO within this, we're talking very much at the highest level. Some banks will call that the GALCO, which is the group ALCO. But depending on your business structure, you might have business ALCOs, you might have technical ALCOs, and also you might have country ALCOs. Very much depending on the structure that you have from your own organization will drive that. If you're very much functionally driven, you'll probably have functional ALCOs. If you're a country-led organization, you're going to have more country ALCOs. The reality is the type of conversations that are had in either of those formats will very be very, very similar. It's just something to bear in mind if you're trying to relate some of this material back to your own organizations so you can actually see the relativity around it. I think the point really around this is, is um, the ALCOs have ultimate responsibility in terms of not only just reporting the day-to-day uh, activity that goes on. And an ALCO will typically meet on a monthly basis, on a month-end basis, and review the activity of what's gone on in the past. That's the primary part of what will happen. And all the material is normally typically produced and presented by the CFO. Um, it's very finance-based, but also it looks at the, the balance sheet in its totality, but will also look at the contractual profile of the balance sheet, which again, from a liquidity management perspective, is one of the most important pieces. It's not just looking at how two sets of numbers have moved over a period, but more importantly, it's how that structural profile has changed over that period. It also looks at through the economic cycle. So it's important to take into account really the forecasting element of the balance sheet as well. It's really the forward-looking basis to be able to advise to the board what are the risks that are coming down the balance sheet and how does the balance sheet need to position itself accordingly. I think then what we'll see is effectively the link into the board risk appetite statement that you covered in the previous um, uh, slide and actually show how the ALCO is ensuring that the board risk appetite is being actually adhered to, be it from a liquidity risk perspective or key balance sheet metrics um, or even from a capital ratio management perspective as well. So what can you sort of see in terms of uh, the responsibilities for oversight in terms of balance sheet risk. Obviously, the executive committee has the ultimate accountability around it, but so do the risk management committees, be it the credit risk element, because effectively the amount of credit that's been written by the credit risk team is effectively driving the amount of lending activity or other business activity that's going on there. And ultimately, it's important that the ultimate risk committees are working alongside each other. So be it the credit risk uh, committees, the market risk, the liquidity risk committees that are all interlinked around that. And actually, the ALCO is the one that brings most of those together. It will look at both the credit risk on the portfolios through the liquid asset portfolio and the investment strategies around that, 
which we'll touch upon in a later uh, module, which I'll present, and then also the liquidity risk piece as well. What you also tend to find is um, the ALCOs will look at both sides of the balance sheet. It's not just about the liability side and the liquidity risk that's inherent within it. It's the behavior between the assets and the liabilities. It's the funding profile. It's the gapping that's been taken on the balance sheet. It's the link into the regulatory returns. It's a link into your board risk appetite and your internal risk piece. And it's the combination effectively about all of these various factors and the need to have a robust debate at the meeting to ensure that you know, effectively the tires have been kicked on a monthly basis, that the balance sheet has been looked at and that it's tracking towards the overall strategic intentions of what the board has set out or the country management team or the business management team and that those metrics are actually being, being met. I think a key point to note is, and we'll go through this when we look at the participants in an ALCO, is that not everyone is an expert in liquidity management or asset management, but actually the people who are represented at the ALCO are an expert in their own field. And it's bringing the right people together to have a robust and constructive conversation about what is going on and that the right level of governance is being addressed and enforced on each of, uh, on each of the elements that contribute to it. So everyone who attends an ALCO is expected to contribute and to provide a level of an expertise and a view on what's going on. There shouldn't be any silent participants at an ALCO. Otherwise, you have an ineffective ALCO with too many people possibly um, uh, dominating the actual piece.